Today we're going to find out all about paddles and we interview Greg Bennett from Bennett Surfboards, Greg Supplies Paddles and Chad Meek from Meek Australia, the maker of paddles. We'll also listen to some expert advice from the night of the Manly Warringah Kayak Club's Meet the Paddlers. I'm Greg Bennett. Uh, Barry started the business in the late 50s, firstly making hollow surfboards, uh, then balsa surfboards and eventually polyurethane foam surfboards. Uh, in the early 70s we, we decided to sell products or make products for the surf life saving market and then I think around the mid 70s we, we started making our own Bennett paddles. And, um, I feel these days we have a, a bit, quite a vast range of what we offer and we can just about satisfy almost any customer that comes through the door. When you look at me I, I'd, I'd be saying well what determines a good paddle for me? Is it size? Is it length of arm? How would you know what sort of paddle I wanted? Um, firstly, I would determine what type of uh, craft you were going to use, whether it be a, say, a K1 racing kayak, touring kayak, sea kayak, spec surf ski, uh, ocean surf ski, single or double. I take all those things into account um, without being too nosy. I ask the person's age. Uh, I can usually size up their level of fitness. Uh, what they want to use it for, either in the ocean, for short sprint paddling, surf life saving type races, or say 10 kilometre uh, racing on average, uh, long distance type races. Also whether, they, you know, whether they're serious or they want to use it for recreational purposes, and also how much they want to spend, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be $100 or $700, and uh, take all those things into account. The good okay. thing about, um, about Chad's stuff, you haven't got so many variables. Yeah. You've got, I think uh, you can really overcomplicate it with the different... Seven blade sizes <laughs> uh, in three different layups times three different blade styles, which, whatever that is, seven times three, twenty. You don't have as many variables there, Chad? No, nah, no. Nah. You don't like the variables? I don't think they're necessary. Yeah. Uh, in terms of layup, uh, I'm trying to cater just only to the people who want the best thing that they can get, basically. Yeah. Usually on most paddles, the fabric right through the blade is just a woven um, plain weave carbon cloth. Where the fibres are running almost like they're up uh, over and under, over and under. So the, the actual fibres aren't really being put in tension. It's more the resin that's the resin's being put in, being, getting put under stress because the fibres are not running as straight as they could be. So what we through the body of the blade, we're using a unidirectional cloth where the fibres are stacked on top of each other instead of being woven in. So the reason we put this edging around it is to protect the edges because this cloth will, if, you, if on its own, it would be damaged on the edges. So that's why we have this edging. Um, in the same way, that's why we have the unidirectional cloth through here because the forces, there's not much force trying to break the paddle, um, trying to fold it this way. It's trying to snap it in this direction and that's why we want as much of the fibre as we can running in that direction. So basically, you don't have fiber carbon fibers sitting in the blade not being used not being put under stress we just want to put the strength of the strength oh, of the right. cloth in the directions that it's needed and that's probably one of the most significant things about our blades in comparison to a lot of the others on the market uh, i'm a big believer in in the blade being the same all the time uh, but i always tend to go for the shaft being different. I've always liked on a longer distance race uh, the shaft to be soft. The reason being in the soft shaft, you may lose a little bit at the start on the power on the start, but as the race progresses and you get tired, the first thing that goes is your technique. As soon as your technique's gone, you're gone. You can create injury. Uh, so the best and most important thing in it, throughout any race you do is to maintain the technique. So by having a softer shaft, you can then give away a bit of flex, but then you can still maintain the right blade and the right technique. 
this then will help your boat, regardless of what it is, move forward the easiest. You won't tire as easy because there's not as much strain on the, on the body because you've got a bit more flex in the shaft. It's my own personal opinion on, on that flex and over the years that was integrated into my paddling. I would have a softer shaft for training and I would race uh, with, a, with a stiff shaft because I would say in that short distance in the kayaking, that I could handle a stiff blade for that a period of time and then I would swap to warm down with a, with a flexi shaft so there wasn't as much strain on the body. So for me, more important with the lengths, I could change that easy but I would change the shaft and always keep the same blade size so that way I didn't feel like I was using a different blade and trying to get used to. But for most people here who would probably only own one blade for ocean paddling, I think when you're learning to learn to keep technique a soft shaft will let you complete the race with a, com with a complete technique for 90% of the race. And then if you can keep good technique for the most of your race, you're going to be more stable, you're going to be safer, you're going to enjoy it more, and you won't pull up a sore, keeping you off the water for a little bit of time and save yourself a bit of money on physio. And, uh, you know, all these things can, can help you along the way. So uh, that's just my opinion on, on shafts. Yeah, I tend to um, agree with Jimmy on that. Um, I paddle both the kayak and the surf ski and um, yeah on the kayak I definitely have a stiffer shaft than on the ski but just on the blade size um, in the kayak I tend to go for a bigger blade size and it's more of the the teardrop shape whereas on the ski where your rating is you know a bit higher when you're trying to catch the runs I like a smaller blade one that's easy to release out the back so for me, I actually do use two totally different types of blades between the kayak and the ski. And then for the length, definitely on the ski, going shorter. Um, in the kayak, I use a 215. And then on the surf ski, I use around a 210, which is probably a little bit um, too long for me. I should probably drop down to maybe a 209, 208 for the girls. Yeah, I think most of it's already been said and um, good words there. But I, in terms of, I use a 213 and I have tried consistently to um, go lower and I just can't, it just feels really weird. And even, I, I'm just always staggered by the difference sort of half a centimetre, a centimetre makes, you, you really notice it. But a lot of the guys, um, the South Africans and, and Lewis from Tahiti, they're, they're, they're paddling 210s, 211s. 212s, even the Chalopskis, 212s, and they're, they're 6'4", so most guys I see are probably, and girls, who are, but most paddlers I see are probably, if anything, they're probably on the long side as a, as a general rule. So, you know, you, if you take, take off a centimetre, and if, if they try to take a centimetre off, in the runs especially, they find it makes a real difference where you need that acceleration. If you're given the right guidance, like any sport really, if, you, if you're given the correct guidance by hopefully someone more experienced than yourself, if you're starting out in a sport, um, provided that's the right information will get you on the right track. Um, something too long becomes quite cumbersome to use, you get very tired, it, it uh, makes your muscles very sore depending on how much background work you've done. Uh, whereas too short, your rates uh, Stroke rating is too high, uh, but sometimes helps with the stability because you're going from left to right side more frequently. Uh, but if you're paddling mm -hmm. for in flat water for say an hour, you'll you'll go crazy using a, a very short paddle because you'll take a million strokes and go no faster. So aerobically, it's good, but uh, so therefore something in between. Uh, most people, male paddlers, uh, I would say for ski usually say 212 centimetre is the most popular selling but they can be made either sided in half centimetre increments mm -hmm. is possible. Well I hope you enjoyed part one of how to choose a paddle and please join us for part two. Special thanks to Bennett Surfboards, Greg Bennett and Meek Australia, uh, Chad Meeks and also to Manly Ringer Kayak Club for the production of this podcast.